Hi there everybody, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you back to AP Chemistry. In this video we are wrapping up Unit 8, which is all about acids and bases. And specifically this video is about how pH and solubility of ionic compounds are related to each other. If you learned something from this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? We would love to have you as one of my subscribers. Well, as we take a look at pH and solubility, let's start by considering a saturated solution of a very slightly soluble compound. Magnesium hydroxide is not the most soluble thing in the world, but let's imagine that we have a saturated solution of that. So here I have written the equation for the dissociation of magnesium hydroxide. And we have its KSP value, as we learned about back in Unit 7. And it's a, a fairly small number, which means that magnesium hydroxide is not really soluble. Now, let's imagine that we're going to take this saturated solution of magnesium hydroxide, and we're going to change the pH. Okay, and we're going to change the pH this time by raising the pH. Now, before we talk about what the process is, let's think about how we'd actually go about doing that. Okay, how would you raise the pH of something? Well, probably the most common way is to add some hydroxide to this, adding some uh, base. It might be sodium hydroxide, it might be uh, it might be potassium hydroxide. In some way, we're raising the pH by adding hydroxide ions to this, to this a mixture in some way. Well, let's think about this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Okay? If we're adding hydroxide ions, that means we are increasing this hydroxide right here, which means we're adding a product to a system at equilibrium. Now what happens, according to Le Chatelier's principle, whenever you add a product to something at equilibrium? Well, you might remember that that's the direction it's going to go. It's going to be shifting toward the left, isn't it? It's going to shift toward the reactant side. Now what does that mean? That means that we're going to be observing magnesium hydroxide being produced. We're going to see magnesium hydroxide precipitating out of solution. So from a practical standpoint, that means that if we raise the pH of the solution, then the magnesium hydroxide becomes less soluble. Now, I guess the opposite would be true as well, wouldn't it? If we were to lower the pH, you can imagine what's going to happen to the solubility of magnesium hydroxide. So we can see one case here where pH and solubility are very closely related to each other. Now let's try another example. Let's try calcium fluoride. Now, calcium fluoride is, once again, not the most soluble thing in the world. Here is a balanced equation for the dissociation of calcium fluoride. It's going to make a calcium ion and a couple of fluoride ions. And by looking at that KSP value, we can also see that calcium fluoride is really not that soluble either. Now, this time, we're going to take a saturated solution of this calcium fluoride, and this time, we're going to lower the pH. Now, once again, I'm going to ask you the same question. How do we go about doing that? How do we lower the pH of something? Well, to lower the pH, you're probably going to be adding acid. Okay? It might be hydrochloric acid. It might be you know, nitric acid, something else. But in some way, we're adding some acid. So we're adding some hydronium ion to this. Now, if we add hydronium ion to this mix, what's the hydronium going to do? Is there something that this hydronium can react with in this equation? Well, I see something that jumps out at me. I see that fluoride ion right there. And I would say that that hydronium or the hydrogen ions are going to react with the fluoride. We know that H plus and F minus react quite readily, don't they? What's going to happen once we add the hydronium here? Well, the fluoride is going to be reacted and essentially removed from the mix, isn't it? So if that fluoride is removed, in which direction is the equilibrium going to shift according to Le Chatelier's principle? Well, it's going to shift toward the right this time, isn't it? Toward the product side. And so that means that from our point of view, we're going to actually observe the calcium fluoride becoming more soluble. 
And so that's what's going to happen if we lower the pH. And so here's another case where we're going to see that the pH and the solubility of these ionic compounds are related to each other. Now, on the AP exam, uh, they're not going to have you carry out calculations for this. This is not something that they want you to calculate, but they are going to expect you to be able to answer questions kind of like what we saw here in this, in this uh, presentation. And so think about that. Slightly soluble hydroxides and other ionic compounds, especially those that have the conjugate bases of weak acids like you know fluoride or perhaps nitrite or some other anions in there that you can think about. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it as well. If you did, please consider smashing that thumbs up button. If you're looking for a comprehensive review and practice program, as we're getting kind of toward the end of AP Chemistry, I'd love for you to consider my ultimate review packet. It has hundreds of practice questions, multiple choice, uh, free response. These are not a bunch of little rinky-dink uh, practice questions. These are questions that I have written to be specifically getting you ready for the AP exam, very similar to what you're going to see on that test. These, these are some pretty tough questions to get you ready to score that five. So thanks for watching. If you're interested, head over to ultimatereviewpacket.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.